Hi guys, Adam Butte here from Authentic Sales. Today we're going to be talking to you about how do you grow a business without a growth mindset. All about our mindset, all about the way that we operate, and all about how we can take what's in here to more of this stuff. Stay tuned. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And I've brought you Adam again because we can't get enough of you, mate. How are you doing today, Adam? Uh, I'm excellent, Prosper. I'm excited, full of energy, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out of uh, comes out of my mouth today. <laughs> <laughs> I like that mindset. And speaking of mindset, Adam, obviously today we're going to be talking about um, you know how you know you can use a growth mindset in order to grow your business. But those that are just tuning in today, um, you know, Adam is an international published author. He's a sales expert. He's also a course creator who helps growth mindset and purpose uh, driven business owners to scale their business by increasing their sales, profits and systems, and also creating them time to work on their business instead of working in it. So they have a sellable asset of a real value um, in the end. So we got talking and one of the things that um you know adam helps people with is helping people with their mindset now obviously if you don't believe in yourself who else can and at the end of the day you know you might hear some gurus of the world talking about mindsets and you think it's something to do with um you know being a hippie or all that airy fairy stuff but guess what they're talking about your personal beliefs they're talking about how you can actually find success um you know in everything else that you're doing and it all stems from having a perfect mindset now i'm not an expert in this that's the reason why we've brought adam to have a chat with us today with regards to this now adam tell us a little bit about um you know why having a growth mindset is actually crucial uh in anything not just in business um you know when it comes to expansion yeah, it's a great question, Prosper. Um, I learned this from one of my mentors, uh, Jim Fortin, um, who's a transformational coach in the US, and I've done a, a bit of coaching with him. Um, his philosophy is we either grow and evolve or we shrink and we die. And um, when I learned that um, a long time ago, it made a lot of sense because What's business all about? What's life all about? What's our relationships all about? I mean, it's an all encompassing thing. Like business is an extension of what we, who we are, and what we do. Our relationships are an extension of who we are and who we do them with. You know, our health is a relation, is an extension of, you know, it's, it's all the same. So when we look at it from a business perspective, everybody in business is in business to grow. You know, they look at what they achieved last year and they set their new goals and their new targets on what they want to achieve in the following year so how do you grow and expand your business if you're operating from the same person you were a year ago you just can't because you're making decisions based on what you've done in the past you're not making decisions based on where you want to be moving in the future so there's a massive disconnect Absolutely. And I appreciate that you bringing in, you know, the whole growth when it comes to mindset. But you asked the question, how do you, you know, grow without, um, you know, expanding yourself? Um, would you place this maybe on fear? Uh, would I place the growth on fear? Yes. Would you, yes. Would you place that the fact that people are not willing to grow or expand themselves? Is it because of fear? Either maybe yep. fear of failure or fear of rejection. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of success. Most importantly, there's a little there's a little thing called our comfort zone, and unfortunately, human beings, as a general rule, work on Groundhog Day. They do things exactly the same today as what they did yesterday, as what they did the day before, as what they've done the day before, because we like to have familiar routine. And, and we're comfortable in that familiar routine. And anything that challenges that actually puts us into fright and flight. You, you can feel the, the anxiety building in some people. And 
stepping outside of that comfort zone actually prohibits most people from expanding their business because they're afraid of failing. They're afraid of being judged. They're afraid of making mistakes. Um, or they could simply be afraid of the success. And because of all this um, subconscious fear, um, it could be also fear in, in, in self-doubt in their own ability to be able to achieve what they want to do. So because of all this stuff, most people don't even try. And even if they do try, they would probably only give it 50, 60, 70%. And then they've got the justification, yeah, I didn't think that was going to work anyway. Absolutely. Now, there's, I've, I've only been in Australia for 10 years, Adam, and you probably appreciate this a lot more. There's what's called the tall poppy syndrome, which basically, um, you know, stifles the growth of a lot of people. Would that um, mindset also be something that is crippling a lot of people's growth? Or is it actually uh, perpetuating um, their growth? Yeah, the tall poppy syndrome um, really does affect people's self-worth. Um, and that fear of rejection from another person, that fear of um, self-doubt will creep in because of that. So when it comes to tall poppy syndrome, it's really bad here in Australia. I, I love America because America just is all about how do we all get bigger? How do we all get better? Whereas Australia is all about how do I squash you down so that I'm the one that's succeeding and not you? You know, um, but if you don't have that mental power to be able to um, push through that rejection from other people, you, you won't succeed in anything. You know, whether it's business, whether it's a relationship with someone else, it, it, it won't matter. That tall poppy syndrome will knock you out and you'll become a victim to, to, your, own, to your own beliefs. Absolutely. And when it comes to sales, we did touch upon a little bit of, um, you know, fear of rejection. Could you just maybe explain to, a, a, you know, our audience what that entails and how do you overcome that? Yeah. So with fear of rejection, it's a it's a massive topic because what I like to do, um, Prosper, is I'm a big believer that sales is an extension of who we are, right? And, and that's what I say in, in all of my messaging. Sales is not what we do, but it's an extension of who we are. Now, when it comes to fear of rejection, what we have to understand is the way that the human being operates. Now, a human being, you and me, our partners, our friends, there's only three things in life that a human being absolutely craves. The first thing is to be loved. The first thing is to be appreciated. Uh, the second thing is to be appreciated. And the third thing is to be heard and valued, right? So we need to be having those three things in place. Now, if one of those things is not in order when it comes to sales, people are judging us all the time. They're judging how we look. They're judging how we talk. They're judging um, you know, whether they believe in, in whatever we're saying. Like we're constantly being judged, right? So because we're constantly being judged, what that does is it actually triggers those three main core elements that make the human being work. And those three core elements um, is what they think they're being judged on, but they're not being judged on that. In most cases in the sales world, if someone says no, if someone's not interested in what you're selling, um, the product or the service, what they're actually doing is saying no to your product and service. They're not saying no to you. So when we can differentiate that and move away from taking that so personally, that it's not, they're not judging me as to who I am because they don't know me. But they're saying no to what I'm offering. Um, so having that sense of detachment from the outcome enables our mindset to stay purposeful all the time. If we're attached to that outcome, then it's leading us down the path of self-rejection. And that's why most people don't like selling because they feel like they're, they're personally being rejected, not their products and services are being rejected. Fantastic. That's a great shift in mindset because, you know, when I write an email and somebody says, no, take me off your list, it sort of feels like 
that is, um, you know, a, a personal attack. But how can people then sort of learn to say roll with the punches or maybe learn how to accept, um, you know, that 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 sort of re rejection in, in and of itself? Yeah, if you're operating from a place of gratitude, regardless of the outcome. So if somebody sends you an email back and says, Prosper, take me off your list, instead of taking that personally, it's like, oh, why? What have I done? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, man, thank you so much. I really appreciate you actually letting me know. Good luck and all the best. So when we're approaching it from that, again, there's complete detachment from the outcome. But when we're approaching it from that perspective, Prosper, what we're then doing is we're enabling our mindset to stay on track because we're not sucking into all that monkey chatter that goes on in the back end. Fantastic. So it's also natural to actually count every fear of rejection or every rejection that comes through as a failure. Now, how do we learn to actually sort of accept failure and what sort of mindset do we need to be getting into um, business with? Because I understand that if you learn how to accept challenges and see them as opportunities, you must, you can also, um, you know, learn to accept failure and be willing to sort of uh, take risks. What's your advice on that? If, um, if we think back to what it was like when we were little kids, and we were trying to walk for the first time, right? And we just kept falling over. Another step, we fall over. Another step, we fall over. If we're operating from the place of, I can't do this anymore, this is too hard, then none of us would ever walk. So it really is through trial of experience. And people, when people realize that failure doesn't mean that it's over but failure actually means you're getting feedback on what you can do differently then that's where the growth mindset comes into play because we're looking at this opportunity i've always said to people that i've trained even when i was doing sales management and in my teams fail your way to success i want you to stuff up as much as you possibly can so that you can learn from it as quickly as possible. You will get far better results making all those mistakes really quickly and getting the feedback that comes from that straight away than what you would do if you're walking on eggshells because you're fearful of making the mistake. Mm. Okay. So you've mentioned kids. I've got a three-year-old and a seven-year-old and every time they do something, let's say they learn how to do a flip. Uh, they're always like, dad, look at me, look at me. And then they do the flip and then pretty much they just waste my time. As kids, we are looking, or as adults, we're always looking at the approval of other people. And um, how does that play now when, you know, you get that rejection, it feels like you're not being approved because I believe that people with a fixed mindset spend a lot of time worrying about what other people would say about maybe their intelligence, their smartness or their talent. Um, and what I'm hearing from you is that in order for anyone to embrace that sort of growth mindset, they should sort of learn to stop being concerned about what other people think and, um, you know, getting people's approval. Yeah, hundred percent. So that comes down to those three things about, you know, wanting to be appreciated, wanting to be loved and wanting to be accepted so when our kids are doing that to us what they're saying to us is dad dad look at what i've done they're looking for that feedback for you to say awesome because that's giving them the validation of acceptance love and appreciation of what they've done and they've been heard you know if we look at what happens in business none of that stuff happens in business it doesn't your managers will not say hey hey well done man pat you on the back no in fact, it's the opposite. They see you get results, so they want to push you harder to get bigger results, as opposed to acknowledging and rewarding and understanding the effort that's gone into what you've created. And that fear of judgment is in the, in the workforce. If you stuff up, you get told off. Absolutely. Now you're bringing up, you know, a few wounds. That's the reason why I left the workforce, because I 
kept on being criticized and you know I, I always thought I was good at what I was doing because <laughs> most people can't accept criticism you know without getting offended especially like you said you know when they're sort of um you know being with their managers I mean but I feel like in order for them to cultivate a really good growth mindset they must actually learn to not take criticism as a negative thing would you agree to that yeah well what is criticism anyway so crit criticism to me is critique all right and then they've just chucked on a bit of an ism because that's someone else giving you their little isms right so if we critique ourselves this is when we have that growth mindset it's like a, a professional athlete right a professional athlete is constantly looking for inches that they can improve on in order to grow um, into the best um, possible peak condition that they can be in. The critique that we get in the business world is exactly the same. It's giving us the opportunity to learn how to grow and become better at our craft. What affects most people is their ego. And if you have a big ego and you can't take feedback and you can't handle criticism and you can't, you know, you're afraid of stuffing up because of your image or all that sort of stuff, what that tells me is you have massive self-worth problems. And that's why the mindset stuff is critically important because we, we must work on that self-worth so that you can be like King Kong and you can you know, beat your chest and you can be loud and proud about who you are, what you're representing and the difference that you want to make to the world. And when you're in that power, if you've got that mindset of like that Superman resilience mindset, then all that other stuff just bounces off you. It doesn't stop you. In fact, you don't even you don't even hear it. Um, so it's a it's a it's a really big thing. I mean, I look at um, and I see all the books that you've got in your background. So, yeah, my bookshelf is the same. If I turn off my my little um, screen thing here, you'd see it all all behind you. I've probably invested over the last twenty years, prosper over one hundred and fifty grand in my own personal development in non traditional things. Right, and the reason that I've spent so much money on on my own mindset is so that I can get those little inches every single day to just become better at my craft. Because when I learn how to become a better person, then I know how to become a better salesperson or a better business owner as a byproduct of that. Whereas traditional selling is all about, what do you say when the wife says no? What do you say when you can't get through to the receptionist? What's the trial close? What's the step close? What, how do we, all that stuff's irrelevant. None of that's got anything to do with the mindset. It's got nothing to do with us as people. Um, and to me, it's all about it's all about human communication. Absolutely. From what I'm gathering from you is, you know, you're talking about the inches that people need to sort of take towards, um, you know, their, their actual results. I mean, we were talking about earlier on how, you know, both were celebrating, you know, our successes and how you have used, you know, the watch as a symbol of, you know, reminding you every single time um you know of the time that you actually got that six figure um you know sale now i'm understanding from what you're saying that we should focus on the process not the results so you are saying that rather than being too concerned with you know you achieving the result that you desire like you say the closing of the sale or what to objection handle what to say when the wife comes in you should focus more on the process of actually achieving that result and sort of learn how to enjoy um, learning the process and seeking out ideas to make improvements as you go. Is that is that the conclusion that I'm getting from the last you know sentence that you mentioned? There? Yeah, you've, you've nailed it there, Prosper. Um, the, so here's the thing. To me, goal setting is important because we must have an idea of where we want to be heading, right? But where goal setting is flawed is that there's two things that we don't have control over. Uh, well, there's one thing really. It's the time in which we can achieve the result. So when we're setting a, when we're setting a goal, um, 
and we know the direction that we want to be heading in, we could say, I want to make $5 million in my business in the next 12 months. If you don't have the identity of a $5 million man, you're never going to make $5 million in your business anyway. And that's why New Year's resolutions don't last longer than a few weeks because it's not in people's identities. They set these audacious goals, things that they've never achieved before, but in here and in here, it's not part of who they are, so they can't achieve it. So when we're enjoying the process, our goals will change as we grow. And when we're getting more focused on what we're doing now instead of what we're doing tomorrow, then we have the ability to do things in a much more profound way because our attention is focused on the now. It's not focused on what we've done in the past. It's not focused on what we think we're going to do in the future. It's purely focused on how do we get the best result now. So having that clear intention to be in the moment, your goals will always move as you grow. But what I know for sure is that human beings overestimate what they can achieve in the short term and they underestimate what they can achieve in the long term. And that's because they're focusing on the wrong thing. Fantastic. This is beautiful, man. So obviously you're talking about the inches that we need to, you know, step towards the goal. And now you're speaking, um, you know, in terms of focusing on the now, which brings me to something I maybe uh, call maybe creating time for daily reflection. Okay. Um, you know, how important is it that at the end of the day, we spend time thinking about what went well and what didn't and actually have time to reflect, um, you know, on on how we are improving ourselves, um, you know, in order for us to create maybe a business that's profitable and enjoyable or like you help people to create a sellable asset of real value. So what's the question there? Oh, so how important oh. is it to sort of self-reflect to ensure that you are... Um, yes. Yeah. So if we're thinking about um, what we want to achieve in the future and our mindset is constantly out there, what we have lost focus on is all the stuff that we are actually achieving right now. So human, human beings have this great knack of feeling like they're not achieving the results that they want and that's simply because they've forgotten how to focus on what they're actually getting. So one of the things that I teach people, uh, a really simple method that I learned a long time ago, was to have a gratitude journal by my side of my bed. And every night when I go to bed, I will write down three, four, five, six things um, that I'm grateful for that happened to me today. And the reason that I do that is because too often in life, we've got our vision on the prize. So the watch, that was the prize. But what I didn't have was the vision of the process and all the little short-term wins that I was having along the way. And because I wasn't focusing on all the little wins that I was having along the way, I got myself into a, a state at many times where I felt like I'm just not getting anywhere. Who's felt like that in their business where you just feel like you're just on that treadmill going a thousand miles an hour, you're not achieving the results that you want, everything just seems to be too hard, too far away. And that's because we haven't got the gratitude for all the good stuff that is actually happening. Now, when we're operating from an attitude of gratitude, what that also does is it changes our whole energy. It changes our vibration. It changes the way that we speak to people. It changes the way that we behave in front of people. And what that also does, Prosper, is that gives, I mean, we want to be magnetic. You know, we want people to be drawn to us. We want people to be attracted to us. We want people to really want to be in our presence. We want people to want to do business with us. Is someone going to want to do business with someone who's grumpy, who's stressed, who just is a, a negative Nelly, who's, you know, who's just pessimist, not an optimist? or they're wanting to do business with someone who really sees the bigger picture, that's got great energy, that is fully committed to showing up every day, 
that is just fun to be around. You know, your energy, as an example, amazing energy. How could people not want to do business with you? How could people not want to be in your world, whether they do business with you or not? Because you're just attracting that. And that, to me, is all part of your mindset. So a lot of people that are in business are not focusing on that, but they have to be focusing on that. And that's why attitude of gratitude, writing it down every day, thinking about what really all the good stuff that's coming into our lives is going to help us operate in a much better way every day moving forward. Fantastic. Now, Adam, somebody's probably sitting on their chair right now and thinking, oh, wow, what these guys are talking about is pretty amazing. And I'm drawn to, you know, uh, wanting to work more and discover more about my mindset. What would be the best way for people to reach out to you there, Adam? Um, right behind me there, you can see my little QR code. So you're very welcome to uh, jump on that book call, come into my diary. I'm, the, I'm sort of old fashioned prosper. I'd much rather have a quick phone conversation with someone instead of email communication. Um, let's just have a chat. You know, if you're, if you're struggling in these areas, then there's no doubt why your business would be struggling too. So let's have a chat about that. Fantastic. And thank you so much for that offer. But as you would know, there's always that you did mention this uh, name, uh, negative Nelly, uh, sitting in the uh, audience saying, you know, what? we've always done things like this around here. And my favorite Australian statement, nah, she'll be all right, mate. What would you she'll say? She'll be all right, mate. <laughs> what would you say to somebody who's got that sort of mindset and um you know attitude going into business uh it takes me back to that very first thing i said at the beginning of our call today mate we either grow and evolve or we shrink and we die so if that's your attitude you know where you're going to head and and it's sad but it's the it's the facts you know, 95 percent of businesses that start up are, are finished within five years and to me it's no surprise that the reason that 95 percent of them fail within that first five years is because they have that she'll be right mate attitude they don't have the um they don't have that growth mindset of of how do we become better as people first so that our businesses can get stronger second um and they don't look for constant coaching you know you're i see you always um looking for someone that you can learn from i'm always trying to learn from someone i want to see people that have achieved the results that i want to achieve before me and i want to just pick their brains so that i can fast track that for me you know why do i need to go through all the mistakes that have cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years you know um and businesses too because of my ego, as opposed to wanting to have that coach that can show me the quick way, the better way, the way that works and, and help me learn on that process. So if you don't grow and evolve and you, you think you'll be right, you won't be. I love that. <laughs> I love that. And I really appreciate the time that you've taken yet again for very informative um you know episode on you know so that we can actually grow together with um you know our mindset now there you have it folks obviously adam is going to be coming back again um next time we're going to be talking about uh the skill sets that you need in order for you to actually um you know have a sellable asset of real value and if you've been tuning in and watching in um all these episodes please subscribe and also um at the end of this you should be invited by adam to his five day challenge that we will have all these videos um in one place so you know as an entrepreneur your mind is just one of your greatest assets and it's absolutely critical and crucial for the health of your business and for your own uh well-being because you can't do well if you don't feel well so you need to use your thoughts in a way that actually supports your growth value creation and growth now adam i can't thank you enough for yet another um exciting and informative um you know segment where we've been talking about things that can literally help people create a business that's profitable and enjoyable thank you my pleasure mate appreciate being on and um, i hope 